Hello there, it's Kenneth from the University Archives here. Unfortunately, we are closed and working at home from the moment due to the COVID-19 crisis. But that doesn't mean we're still not busy, and it doesn't mean we want to stop sharing our items and collections with you. So today I'm doing this video, which is the first I've done, so please bear with me, where we're going to look at one of our collections. And the collection we're going to look at today, or at least in part, is the papers of this gentleman, Professor George Howard Bell. Professor Bell was Professor of Physiology at Dundee from 1947, when it was still University College Dundee, through to 1975, by which time it was the University of Dundee. Now, I'm not actually going to talk about Professor Bell as an academic, distinguished as he was, and indeed he was also distinguished as a university administrator. What I'm going to talk to you about today is something you might have seen in the newspapers, and that is his photographic collection, which we are really lucky to hold at the archives, because Professor Bell was a really accomplished photographer uh, who took a lot of different images of Dundee and on his travels around the world. Today, it's some of the Dundee images I'm going to talk to you about, because he was taking images at a time when Dundee was going through rapid change, and the collection really captures this well. So the first image I want to show you are some of the university itself. Now, in the 1950s and 1960s, there were a lot of changes going on on campus. The biggest of these was the building of the Tower Building, which you will all know and where our home is, from 1959 to 1961. And Professor Bell captured this. He also captured it when the Tower was extended later in the 1960s and the Tower Extension was built where the Darcy Thompson Lecture Theatre now is, and where History, English and so on have their offices. So here are three pictures he took during this time. On the left, we see the tower going up. The building you can see at the background there is the original Harris Academy, uh, which opened in the 1880s and was where Harris Academy was until it moved out to the Perth Road at the start of the 1930s. It was later used by St John's School uh, but by this time had been ceased to be used, and it's now where Bonner Hall is. In the middle picture, we can see them making preparations to start work on the tower extension. So we can see the tower there just is completed uh, with the extension waiting to be joined on. And in the background are some old favourite university buildings, including the Carnelli building. Picture on the right there, that's the last two of the original four houses which made up the original University College buildings. So when University College opened in 1883, it was basically centred on these four converted Georgian houses. The first two had come down in the 1950s to make way for the tower proper, and the last two came down in the 1960s so the tower extension could be built on them. And this is them as they are under demolition. Here is another picture Bell took which shows change at the University. And if we look in the foreground, we can see the emergence of the Tower of the Dental School and Hospital, which is a prominent building. But this picture also shows another area of change in Dundee, because as we can see in the background, the T Road Bridge is being built. Now, Dundee had wanted a road connection with Fife since at least 1919, uh, when James Thompson, the city architect, talked about the scheme. It was basically discussed on and off for about the next 40 years. But eventually, work started in the 1960s, and in 1966, the Tay Bridge opened. But the Tay Bridge opening meant we lost these, the Dundee to Fife Ferries, popularly known as the Fifeys, though officially known as the Tay Ferries. These are the last two to operate on the route, the MV Abercraig and the MV Scots Craig. They were also joined by an older steamer that had early or been one of the primary steamers, the BL Nairn. But in 1966, with the road bridge open, the Fifey sailed for the last time. But Professor Bell's picture here nicely captures them passing each other in the Tay. And it's difficult for us to realise now in some ways this was an every damage that Dundonians for generations took for granted and has been completely lost. So it's nice we've got this photograph to preserve the memory. Work at the waterfront was also generated by the building of the bridge. It meant basically the waterfront had to be realigned because of where they chose to build the bridge through. So that resulted in the filling in of two docks. 
and it also resulted in the loss of what many Dundonians considered one of the city's iconic architectural features, the Royal Arch. On the left here, we can see the arch as it looked before it was demolished, and on the right, we can see it being demolished. The arch was uh, built to commemorate the visit of Queen Victoria to Dundee and replaced an earlier temporary structure. And it stood for over 100 years, wasn't always popular, despite what some people will tell you. There was people who thought it didn't really fit in with Dundee's architecture. Also, we can see in Professor Bell's pictures, by the time it came down, it had become incredibly dirty and really needed a lot of work done to it. You can also just glimpse in that picture some aspects of greenery that were actually growing on the arch. So it wasn't in the best of condition. But down it came for the Tay Bridge, and that proved very controversial. The Earl Grey dock was filled in, the King William IV dock was filled in, and Dundee arguably lost its relationship between the centre and the seashore. And that's something that the current waterfront redevelopment has tried to address. So Professor Bell took a lot of other pictures of Dundee at this time, and that's something we can maybe look at in another video. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. In the meantime, stay safe, and we'll see you soon.